dear friends this is the second part of our study of differential equations in mechanics from the books smith and smith if you just want to see today we are going to give an example of the link between differential equations and uh, mechanics here we have to be clear that whenever we are talking about newton's second law we should always express it in the form of a vectorial equation so m is the mass of the particle under motion suppose i am just dropping a stone or suppose i drop a chalk from here i just leave it it falls here so what is the distance traveled here that's the question for example now here you say okay this is just a one dimensional thing what how can you talk about three dimensional issues here what happens there is no x axis and y axis here x axis x coordinate is 0 y coordinate is 0 we are looking at it at the particle which is just falling along the z axis so you remember that we had looked at a particle in this form with x y and z axis and the particle was moving in space but here in this particular case it is just dro being dropped from here it is falling down here so that's exactly what we are going to study today and what kind of equation it will be so of course you know that there is no force along x direction and y direction but there is a force along the z axis which is a force due to the acceleration due to gravity and the gravitational force but it is against it is in the it is in the opposite direction of the z axis so it is the direction of the force is not in the positive direction of the z axis but in the negative direction of the z axis so the force has a negative sign in the beginning so basically if you are just dropping a stone from here and it comes and hits here with certain velocity so the differential equation is z star star m into z star star is minus m of g because the direction of the gravitational force is opposite to the positive direction of z so these has to be maintained when you do mechanics right so if i so now what i'll do so this is d2z dt2 is equal to minus g so when you have a second order differential equation of this very simple formula g is a constant there will be two constants of integration because you will integrate twice because what you will have here is d d t of d z d t which is nothing but the velocity of the object along the z axis and that is minus g so what you will have is d z d t is equal to minus g t when you integrate dt here plus some constant v right now you have to again integrate this if you integrate this right with respect to t so you will get z of t finally as minus half gt square plus bt plus a so these b and a these are called the constants of integration which you anybody who has done basic calculus knows this or constants of integration because it's a second order different ordinary differential equation there will be two constants of integration And so, how do I get any idea about the true values of these constants in this scenario? So, we need two conditions to get 
to know what these constant are. So here at t equal to 0, when I just drop the chalk, for example, from here, my velocity was 0 and my position was this height h. Right? So suppose my height, I have dropped it at a height h. Suppose, I am just telling that it is this height. So it implies that h, this height, at time t equal to 0, the particle of that height h, and I put 0 here, so this will be 0 and 0 here. So I will have a equal to h. Because at because z of 0 is h. So the, at time 0, this was at the height h, which you can understand. Now once this is done, what I will do, uh, my next expression would be to write z of t as minus half gt square plus bt plus h. But I know it was a free fall, so I didn't give any velocity, I just left it. If the initial velocity was 0, it started operating under gravity. Gravity gave it the velocity. So now, the z dash, or sorry, z dot at 0, that is, what is z dot? Well, anyway, let me just calculate z dot, z dot t, means dz dt, the velocity. That is, if you calculate here, you will have minus gt plus b plus h. Now, when at t equal to 0, this was 0, initial velocity. Okay, so, z dot t at z, so z dot 0 was equal to 0 and that is equal to, I put 0 here, it will be equal to b plus h. B plus h. Okay. So, what does it? Hmm? So, it will, sorry. So, it will be z dot t is minus g t plus b plus h. No, h is not there. So, 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 sorry, sorry, h is not there because h is constant. Oh, sorry, sorry, I made a mistake. Okay. So, it is gt plus b. So, I, uh, sorry. Uh, so, minus gt plus b, z dot 0 is equal to 0, is equal to, now I put t equal to 0 here. So, it will be the 0 plus b. So, b is 0. So, when you have b is 0, so now, my expression, so how much information you are getting just by looking at the physical condition. So you, your zt is now, you put b as 0, h remains h and so h minus half gt square is the answer. So, at the final time when it hits it, at say at t equal to, at t equal to t0, the particle hits the ground. The moment it hits the ground, what will you have? Then, that this zt0, that z of t0 is 0. Now the z, z axis, it comes and hits the origin. It drops here. So z of t naught is equal to h minus half g t t naught square. So so z of t naught is zero. So h. So once you know how much time it has taken, you will immediately know actually what height it has travelled. Though even though initially you had not known the height. So if you have a stopwatch and know how many what how many seconds it has taken for this to touch the ground, you will know at what, from what height you have left it. You can do these experiments at home, just drop in and having a stopwatch. 
is half g t naught square. In fact, if this height h is known, you can know how much time, if I know what is the height here, if I can measure, I can know how much time it for this particle takes to cover this distance h. Because there you can actually calculate from here that t naught is 2h by g root, root over 2h by g. So once one is one is known, the other has to be known. Anyway, h is usually given as one of the initial conditions. So because it, so what happened? So there are two conditions which are called initial conditions, which allow us one one it tells about at time t equal to zero. That is why it's called the initial condition. So at time t equal to zero, what was the velocity? What was the position and what was the velocity? Because there are two constants, we need two, two such conditions to evaluate that. So this is a very standard result which was also known to Galileo actually. And uh, which we have now deduced through Newton's law of motion. So you see how much information of very simple looking equation actually encap encapsulates. It gives you so much more information that okay that if you know the height you know the time the particle takes to come down so all these things if, if you know if you do not even know the height and assume human height then you know and know the time it has taken to fall you can calculate that height so how power how much power is packed into this equation so this is basically one can call it the super equation of mechanics it is the Equation of all equations, so, so it, it tells us a, a lot of things. Why it is important to learn this? What, what do you learn from it? it it's predictive, it, it's power of prediction. Then if you know the height, I'll give you the time taken to fall. If you know what was there initially, I know what is there finally. So this predictability is the power of science and that is the reason why science has advanced us so much in this few maybe say 400 or 500 years of existence compared to any other modes of human activity that we have tried out. Uh, so I hope you keep up your interest in science and mathematics and you see how powerful is uh, Newton's idea, a very simple idea which you can observe just when you try to drive a car. Of course you will never see the force actually acting what you see is this manifestation, the acceleration. But that simple idea, and also simple idea of dropping a chalk, has so much math in, involved in it. So with this, I hope I can stop. And at the same time, I also will continue discussing from the book the various uh, two types of equations, first order differential equations, second order equations, and their applications to various problems of mechanics as we go along. So this is the third part of our uh, series for, for the love of mechanics. Thank you very much.